weather outside is boiling, but inside the temperature is low, tempers are high, and we're contemplating whether it's okay to eat the dead. There are no easy answers to Frostpunk's problems, so I thought I'd share the wisdom that has been getting me through the long winter nights. Obviously, everyone's city is their own, so these are more general pointers. Things I wish I'd known before struggling in my early survival attempts. Please do share your strategies in the comments below, and maybe we'll get through this without being bored alive by angry peasants. My first move in every game is to build a workshop. This lets you research the skills and buildings that are going to keep you alive beyond one miserable week. While the workshop is being built, you should send remaining workers to gather the coal, wood and steel you can see on the surface. To aid them, the first thing I research inside my shiny new workshop is faster gathering. This speeds that whole collection process up. Quite why scientists need to invent the concept of picking things up faster is beyond me, but it helps. I then build a second workshop to boost the speed of research. Obviously, make sure both are staffed up with engineers to make sure your research zips along. While this is going on, I build tents and research steam hubs, which are going to be used to heat the tents. More on that later in the video. Your next research product should be the beacon to get your scouting parties working. Getting people out of the city will help stockpile goods. Again, more on that in a bit. From here, it's all about stripping the valley of its precious materials. I like to build a gathering hut by this surface coal. The hut keeps workers nice and toasty, and is more efficient than sending them out to collect individual resource piles. While they are scooping up the coal, I research a coal thumper in the workshop, and build it in the same spot when the surface coal is gone. This way, it's already next door to a gatherer hut, and those workers will start collecting the thumped coal. What is thumped coal? Who knows? You have a few options for wood, but it's good to pick one and focus on it. For this, I prefer researching the wall drill over the sawmills, as the sawmill quickly chews through the frozen trees and becomes redundant. The wall drill is a steady supply of wood for the rest of the game. Always think long term if you can. With wood and coal taken care of, you'll want to research steelworks. The need for steel ramps up as technology progresses, and this is the only route through the tech tree that gets you more of the stuff. Now, there's a good chance this next piece of advice will get patched out at some point, as it really isn't in the spirit of the game. That said, the spirit of the game is mercilessly grinding you down, so I don't feel too guilty about cheesing it. In Frostpunk, workers work during the day, and hunters hunt during the night. But if you're up for some micromanagement, you can wait for the day shift to end at 6pm, and then transfer those workers to hunters' huts, in order to send them out to get food. Pause the game at 6, and use the respective building menus to shrink and grow the workforce. This currently comes at no obvious health cost, so it's pretty much free 24 hour labour. It relieves food pressure in the early weeks of the game, but it does feel like a bit of a scam. Whether you indulge in such naughtiness is really up to you. Either way, I would also research hunters gear at the workshops earlier in the game to get more raw food out of their trips. You'll also want to pass laws as soon as you can, pushing through the adaptation tree to more exotic powers. Emergency Shift is a good first pick, but mainly because it opens up better laws. The Emergency Shift itself is an enforced 24-hour work session. If you apply it to a gathering hut, or wall, drill, or steelworks, it's a great safety net for when you're running low on materials in the early game. But it does cause a spike in discontent and always kills one worker during its first use. Instead, you're much better off with the extended shift law that you can unlock next. This lets you select longer working hours for individual buildings. You just click this switch here for 14 hour days. It is the kind of switch corporate overlords dream of. The next law I pass is child shelters. It increases hope, which is nice, but opens up a second set of laws that lets children help engineers or medics, which makes their workplaces more efficient. I also pass radical treatment, which allows medical posts to shift the gravely ill at the cost of amputated limbs. Now, this is doubly sinister if you've just sent the kids to do work experience with the doctors. Of course, amputations puts pressure on you down the line to build a factory and produce prosthetic limbs to get those patients working again. But the immediate benefit of more efficient medical care has always worked out well for me.
One area where I came unstuck in earlier runs was trying to keep the city warm with just the generator. Extending its power and reach costs a huge amount of coal that you just don't have in the early days of the game. It's far better to research steam hubs in the workshop and use these smaller heaters to warm up buildings that fall outside the generator's reach. Handily, you can set steam hubs to activate during certain hours by toggling time switches on the hub menus. As a result, it makes sense to group buildings based on the hours they're in use. Tents, for example, need 24 hour warmth, so I build these around a 24 hour steam hub. Another benefit to grouping housing like this is that when you later build watchtowers and the like, it's easier to group citizens under one watchful eye. I'm nothing if not an efficient fascist. Elsewhere, my coal thumper and gathering posts are only in play between 8 8am and 6pm, so I group these around a steam hub with the same working hours. One thing to watch out for with this, if you activate extended shifts in these buildings, make sure to change the nearby hub to the same hours, otherwise you're giving those workers a frosty wake up call that is not going to end well. As a side note to this, some buildings can be safely built in the cold. Resource depots and hunters huts don't have anyone working inside, so feel free to build them on the nastiest outside layers of the valley. One of your earlier objectives is to build a beacon so you can send scouting parties out into the wider world to search for survivors and resources. Pillaging the world is key to survival, you'll need the extra bodies to scale up your operations, and the resource stockpiles you'll find can help out in a pinch. As such, it's really important to research more scouts in the workshop as early as possible. Not only does it double your takings, but lets you explore in two directions on the map. You'll also want to research lighter scout sleds in order to push out to the distant corners of the map as fast as possible. Another way to speed up exploration is to keep scouts moving between new locations, instead of having them return to base. The temptation when you find a batch of resources is to bring them straight home, but unless your city is going to die without them, it's much more efficient to hold on to them and push to the next location. The travel time between outposts is much shorter than making long repeat trips back and forth. As your scouts open up the chilly wastes, they'll find outpost sites. Set these up as outposts and you'll get a daily delivery of resources, which can take the strain off your people back home. Well, it means you can make them miserable in a different way instead. To build outposts, you need to research the outpost depot in the exploration and industry section of the workshop. You then build the depot at one of the two sites against the ice wall. For your first outpost, I recommend Tesla City, as this is the only method in the game for producing new steam cores. You'll get one core every day from the outpost, which can be used to build automatons or more advanced buildings. Without Tesla City, you'll have to rely on steam cores you find or salvage, which is very unreliable. A word of warning about Tesla City though, before you can build the outpost, you have to discover the site. And when you do, you'll be given the option to explore it or not. In order to unlock the outpost site, you have to explore it, but doing so will likely kill the scout team. So before opting for this, make sure they've dropped any resources back at the city. Then you can just send them off like the sacrificial lambs they are. If you're feeling down about that, just think of those sweet, sweet steam cores. Where you build your second outpost depends which resources you're struggling with. Personally, I'd always go with coal because any stockpiling you can do early on is only going to help come the big freeze. Either way, outposts are very important. Once you've got steam cores rolling in, you can build automatons, and you really should be using these guys. They're delightfully overpowered, they'll replace the entire human workforce at one facility, they'll work around the clock, they don't need a heated workplace, and they can't get sick. Even better, they still react to the efficiency bonuses from foremen. And who doesn't like the idea of an angry foreman shouting at his robot to work harder? When you first start producing them, they are best put to use automating your resource production. Personally, I found that getting them on steel works were sensible, as it costs a large chunk of steel to build further automatons. More important is to research automaton integration levels 1, 2 and 3 in the workshop. This boosts their efficiency from a base level of 60%, which only makes that 24 hour work shift more beneficial. You'll also want to research engineer automaton as soon as you can, as it lets you send your giant metal spiders to workshops and research for 24 hours a day. I'm not sure how they do that very delicate research with those massive metal legs, but who cares cares about the science when they're eating through the tech tree for you during the late game. And those are just some of the ways you can take the edge off Frostpunk, or at least get a foothold in the early hours. 
Part of the fun is pushing the city in the direction of your choice, so I'm genuinely intrigued to hear what techniques work for you. Add tips and tactics in the comments below and let your fellow viewers show hope or discontent through the medium of a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Of course, we'd love it if you gave us one of those positive thumbs, and a subscription would be even better. I'm not going to tell you to do it. If I've learned anything from Frostpunk, it's that dictators never really win in the end. We'll hopefully see you around these parts again soon. Goodbye!